clearly there is a lot of mixed reaction to the news of Chavez's death. And joining me now for more, we have Eric Farnsworth here in the studio. He is vice president at the Council of the Americas and Federico Alves, a Latin America political analyst. He's joining us from Tampa, Florida. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us this evening. Uh, Thank Eric, you for having me. I'd like to start with you. I want to ask you about the legacy of Hugo Chavez. Obviously, from what we've seen, he's a larger than life figure. And Venezuelans will say that he left them a lot, some good, some bad. But what does he leave the international community and the Latin American region? Well, Hugo Chavez was larger than life. There's no question about it. And what your opinion of him really is, is based on what you were before he came to power. In other words, if you were a member of the lower classes, you generally think that he left you a hope for a better life. He gave voice to people who traditionally didn't have that in Venezuela, both politically and economically. And he gave them hope to be able to advance their circumstances in life. If you were part of the uh, traditional ruling classes or perhaps the business community in Venezuela, you probably think think that he left Venezuela uh, in a lot worse condition than, uh, in fact, he found it. So the legacy is mixed. It depends on uh, your status in life before he came to power. And I think it's something that's going to have to sort itself out in the coming weeks and months. And Federico, I want to get your uh, take on it as well. Well, it's a, <clears throat> the, the legacy of Hugo Chavez, uh, I think the historians in the future will recognize that he was uh, basically a criminal mastermind. He built an empire based on intimidation, torture, bribery, supporting the guerrillas. He basically took down the, any trace of the rule of law and replaced uh, the, 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 the former democracy in Venezuela by his sole discretion. And uh, Venezuela right now is very, very far from being a democracy in uh, Western terms. And it's uh, only comparable to Zimbabwe or the worst dictatorships uh, in the world right now. Well, let me ask you about that. How will the elections turn out then? In 30 days, we're expecting to see elections. How do you think that will play out? Um, I will, of course, vote for whoever the opposition appoints as candidate. Um, but um, I, ho I, ho I hold little hopes that we're going to succeed against the vast machinery of uh, oil money and that uh, Mr. Maduro is controlling. Remember, uh, we're not uh, running against Maduro or uh, anybody in, in particular. We're running against the oil company, the fourth largest oil company in the world, which is directly controlling every aspect of civil society in Venezuela, paying for social services, bribing people. In the last election, they paid $1,000 per head uh, at 5 o'clock before the polls closed, they took another million people to vote for Chavez. When we thought that the election was basically over and we had won, we lost. Eric, do you think we'll see any type of fair elections? Or, or will it matter if it's Maduro and, say, Enrique Capriles? Well, it's no doubt that the organs of the state will be arrayed in support of uh, candidate Maduro, uh, whether it's the press, whether it's the resources of the National Energy Company, as, as the other guest was mentioning, whether it's the, uh, the resources that the state can bring to bear through the Electoral Commission, that sort of thing. Um, but I think it's a challenge for the Venezuelan people. There's no question about that. The opposition has strengthened over the, the years. Uh, they were strong in the last elections in October, uh, and it's up to them to unify around their candidate and hopefully the international community will also be able to uh, talk to the Venezuelan people in a way that will uh, reinforce the message that the democratic process has to be respected and therefore it's on that basis that the elections should be conducted uh, hopefully in the next uh, few weeks. Well even if supporters of Chavez circle around Maduro, Maduro isn't Chavez and he is not going to be as dynamic as Chavez was. Do you see any change down the road uh, because people will be living for what they used to have in him. Yeah, that's a fundamental point. The, the movement Chavismo was built around the cult of personality of Hugo Chavez, and by definition, Hugo Chavez is no longer with us. Uh, Maduro does not have the same personality. He doesn't have the same history. Uh, some would say he doesn't have the same base of public support. So he's going to have to establish that in the next uh, weeks and months ahead. He's going to have to take steps to show his loyalty to President Chavez and the Chavez legacy. And that might mean he would speed up some of the steps in terms of the revolution uh, going forward. It's going to be complicated, and I think it's uh, it's un uncertain how this is going to come out. Federico, do you think there will be any change down the road, whether it's Nicolas Maduro or someone else, 
at the helm, or do you think uh, Chavez's programs will flounder without him there? No, I, I don't think he had, uh, um, you know, I, I don't think that uh, Chavez, the phenomenon, you know, the Chavismo is based uh, around the uh, personality cult, although it, it may look like that. It's like uh, the USSR or any other society is built around the mechanism of distributions of wealth. Basically, um, Chavez confiscated all private enterprise that had any meaning, and also he controlled the oil company, so everybody works for Chavez. And I don't think that can be dismantled by, by democratic means. It, nobody has been able to do that. Now, uh, they use the opposition in Venezuela as an alibi, not more than that. We are allowed to control 49, 47, 40% 40 of the National Assembly, but never more than that. We are always going to get a good percentage of the votes, but we're never going to be above 51% because they, will, they control even the computers where the votes are counted. So we're going to have to live with this until the population of Venezuela realizes that this is a, a political theater and we need to reinvent democracy, which may take probably a generation or a few years. All right, But I don't have go. any hope that we're going to defeat them. Federico Alves in Tampa will let you have the last word there. Eric Farnsworth here in D.C., thank you so much thank both you for your much. time.